if you want to save money buying chicken, you buy a whole chicken and cut it up yourself. And so in this video, I'm going to cut this whole chicken up. I'm going to show you how I do this, and I'm going to show you how I use this to make three meals. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGrinding.com, and today I'm going to do a video where I'm showing how you can get three meals out of one whole chicken. Uh, now this has nothing to do with gardening, but I recently did a podcast talking about the rising prices of food and how it does, this doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. And, uh, you know, I talked about ways to deal with that. And of course, having a, a large garden is a great way to deal with it, but not all, not all, of, not all of us are able to do that. Um, and of course, most of th those of us that aren't complete vegetarians, uh, we eat some form of meat. Uh, Chicken is probably one of the cheaper sources of meat you can buy. Uh, but uh, there's different ways you can buy it, right? Uh, boneless, breast, etc., etc., etc. If you want to save money buying chicken, you buy a whole chicken and cut it up yourself. And so in this video, I'm going to cut this whole chicken up. I'm going to show you how I do this, and I'm going to show you how I use this to make three meals. I'm not going to make the three meals today. I'm just going to explain the process, um, how I cut this up to facilitate that. I use some of it for stir fry, and this is for a family of four. Um, there's me, six foot four man, my wife, five foot four woman, uh, a daughter who's 11, who's almost five foot five, <laughs> and a 13 year old son. Uh, so, you know, we, this makes three meals that feeds our family for like a, a dinner meal, supper time, that sort of thing, okay? All right, so let's get started. I'm going to bring the camera in here closer so you can see what, uh, what I'm doing. All right, so the three meals I make this into is a roasted chicken dinner, a chicken soup, and uh, there's enough of the breast left over to have as a stir fry, okay? So the first step is to get the, the legs off. Now I'm not, you know, a skilled chef or anything like that, um, so if you have amazing skills, um, don't, you know, be kind in the comments, but basically you use the weight of the chicken to help remove it. You know, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, just turn this off. <laughs> you're not going to like this, right? But if you eat meat, this is, <laughs> if you've been buying it cut up for you all this time, this is, this is the process. Now, right here, you sort of take it in. You should have a knife like this, something, a bit of a curve, a bit of a point. You can use something like this. You can use other kinds of knives, but this is a boning knife, I think. So, I mean, this is sort of ideal for this sort of thing. It's got a point and it's got a curved blade and it's kind of skinny. You go down like this, all the way to right here, right, there's a point where it sort of hangs on. Once you've done that, you bring, the, bring, the, bring it back like this, like you bend the knee, and, and turn it over. And this basically dislocates the joint, right? Once you've done that, it'll come away from the chicken very easily. Okay, so there we've got one quarter. Okay, we're going to do more with that, but for now that's the process. Okay, so we just hang, sort of cut at the skin, not at the flesh, right, until we get to, we've gotten right to the spine here. Okay, now again, same process. We sort of go forward a little bit, you know, get at that, what they call the oyster, bend the knee, bend it back, so you dislocate the, the, uh, the joint, and then it comes away. Okay, so now I've just removed the two quarters. Um, next stage here is to remove the wing, and I just, I mean, there's different ways to do this, but I find if you sort of give it a cut like that, You'll, you'll find it'll just come away, right? You're getting, again, you're using the, the weight of the chicken. And it's, it's obvious as you're, you're just sort of slicing away, it just falls away. And see, I haven't cut through the bone, right? right? None of this here, we've cut through bone yet. We've just separated tendons, separated joints. Okay, now we've got our breast. Uh, so now we're going to remove the breast. I've got a container here. I'm going put, to put that, put that in because we're not having that today. Um, so there's lots of different ways to do this. There's probably a best way and a worst way, and I don't know if my way is the best or the worst. Um, I've seen professional chefs do this. They do a better job, of, job than me. But basically, I start from the bottom. I, you know, so the chicken right now is, uh, well, I guess this would be the bottom. <laughs> so I start from the top, and I sort of work my way down, and I just make little slices following the rib cage, again using the weight of the chicken to sort of guide the process. 
Okay, so am I doing the greatest job ever of getting this off? No, but basically I've gotten the breast off here, okay? I'll put that in my container. There's a little bit of meat still attached to that, but that's, that's totally fine. Okay, so now I'm just doing the same thing. This is, I'm just filleting, filleting out the breast. When you go at a speed that you can, you can manage without removing your fingers, you know, you can, you can, you can use the knife to sort of, the sharp part of the knife to push down to, to pull on things, right? Okay, so now I've got the two breasts off. I got a little, this one didn't come off perfectly. I suppose I could get that meat out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so this is not a lot of meat, but this is perfectly enough for a stir fry for four. Uh, if you're meat hungry, uh, often when I do a stir fry, I'll put a little bit, I'll buy a big bag of uh, frozen shrimp and I'll throw maybe, oh, I don't know, uh, a dozen shrimp in with that. These are really small ones. Everybody gets three shrimp sort of thing, right? All right, so now I've got basically the carcass, <laughs> okay? So this is going to be a soup. And all you got to do is you take the back and you, <laughs> you break it, all right? <laughs> and then you... You basically cut through. Okay, so now this goes in a pot. Okay, uh, when, I'm, when I'm off camera later on, I'll add enough water just to cover this meat, right? And I'll bring it to a boil and then I'll simmer it for, simmer it for an hour. That's ready to add to us basically to be stock for a soup, right? When you want to make a soup, you add the other ingredients, the carrots and the potatoes and whatever, whatever kind of soup you're going to make. I use this for a base for all kinds of soups. I'll use this for of course, a chicken noodle soup, but I'll also make a minestrone kind of soup. I'll also make a sort of a vegetable type soup. I'll make soup with pasta noodles in it. Do all kinds of things with, with a base like this because it's versatile. All right, and this is, I mean, I'm always amazed at a lot of these cooking shows where they buy stock. I've never bought stock in my life because I buy a whole chicken. Every time, you know, once a week or once every other week, we buy a whole chicken. We get three meals out of it. One of those meals is soup. We use the stock for the soup. All right, so now I got that. Now, the meal we're gonna have tonight is like a, you could use these now to make something like a fried chicken dinner. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a kind of baked chicken, all right? So we have to cut these up a bit more from what they are. All right, so I'm gonna cut up the, uh, the quarter. You can see the quarter has, there's a line right here. You see that? Okay. If you cut along that line, I mean, you feel around a bit, but usually you, you basically go through cartilage and you don't go through bone. Or if you're going through bone, you're going through a soft part of the bone. All right, so if you cut it along there, it usually you get through. Now, it's often with this uh, quarter, there's a big hunk of fat, so I usually trim that off and throw that in with the stock. I don't worry about it. I mean, we haven't got a lot, of, a lot of meat in this, you know, chicken stock, so I don't worry about there being a little bit of fat in there. Okay, let's do the other quarter. Again, we're following, using that, that spot there where those two different colors meet to indicate roughly where that joint is. And see, I didn't have to, I didn't have to use a meat cleaver to get through that. It just went right through because it's soft at that point. Okay, again, trimming off this fatty part here. All right, so we got our quarter. Now we got our wing. Uh, I like to cut the wing Again, the wing has a place where it cuts, and it's usually right around the middle. So I, I cut the wing into two because the wings take longer to cook. Uh, this here little, uh, it's almost like the hand part of the wing, the wing tip. You cut that off, throw that in with your stock. All right, so again, we've got sort of like, like an armpit type area there, right? A, a bend, right? Where, where it naturally bends. So if you play around with your knife, you can usually find where that will cut. Of course, this one's not working for me today. Maybe a little lower. Yeah, there we go. So you find where it will cut without you having to go through the bone and dulling your knife, right? So you don't really commit until, I just probe a little bit until I feel it going through because you've basically found the cartilage area where the two bones connect. All right, so we got that. And then we got our wing tip. All right, so now I've got Nice cut up, uh, you know, the dark meat, so to speak, right? Which is, <laughs> in my opinion, the best part. Now, I mean, if you've got someone in your house that just must have the, uh, 
the, uh, the white meat. Then, of course, you're going to you put that in here. But um, if you're going to bake the white meat, it, it cooks at a different rate than these parts. So there's a whole different approach to do that. And here, I mean, in this video, I'm talking about three meals from a chicken. So this is, the, you need the whole breast to make a stir fry to feed four people. Okay, so now I've got this dark meat here for our sort of like uh, baked chicken dinner. All right, so here's all I do for that. Uh, put a little bit of oil in the pan here. Not, we don't need much, just enough to keep things from sticking. It's just like a teaspoon of just regular vegetable oil. Okay, got a cast iron pan, about nine inches in diameter, give or take. I think it's probably 10, 10 at the, at the widest. It's got a number eight on it. I don't know what that eight means. Uh, anyway, it's a thousand years old. You put onion, one whole cut up onion in the bottom. Okay. Over the course of this thing cooking, this onion is going to break down. And all the drippings and the, and the cooked up onion that's in the bottom, you can use for gravy. Or you can toss some, you know, cubed up bread in there and make an awesome stuffing from that. Because all the flavor from the chicken is going to be in there. Now, before I put the chicken down, I'm going to season the underside. A little bit of salt and a uh, little bit of pepper. Okay, and just put it down like that for each of these pieces, right? Doesn't, it doesn't take, doesn't take too long. I mean, you can, you can season this with, with whatever you want, right? But it's just what I'm using here for the underside anyway. I'm going to put something a bit more, uh, uh, a bit more zippy on the other side. I like to sort of <laughs> season each side differently. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little pepper. Because we're not going to be flipping this to be cooking. Okay, so the underside's been seasoned with salt and pepper. Okay, now I got some of this sort of uh, uh, Caribbean. This Caribbean stuff here, you can use whatever you, whatever you, sometimes I put um, dried garlic on here with herbs and salt and pepper. Uh, but today we feel like something a bit, a uh, bit, a bit of bite, right? And I could have seasoned both sides with this. I mean, there's lots of different ways to, you know, seasoning is, you know, whatever you, whatever you're into. So, you know, ignore the stage of it. But basically, this is now ready to go in the oven. Right, so this, this cooks in about, in about an hour and a half, it is cooked at 350, okay? Uh, a great trick is when it's time to serve the meal, to take everything out of the pan. So 15 minutes before it's time to eat, take everything out of the pan, take all the meat out, take all the liquid out, put the meat back in and just slightly baste it with the fat and put it in the oven at like 400 for about, or, you know, 375 for about 10 minutes, and that'll just crisp the skin up and brown the underside. But it's not absolutely necessary, okay? So anyway, we got, we got three meals here. We got a roasted chicken dinner. I mean, there's other, I gotta do some other things to go with that, but this is the meat part, right? And that's certainly enough for four people to be fed. Um, even, Big people. <laughs> Depends on how hungry you are. I mean, by, by choosing this amount of meat for your meal, it's forcing you to eat a lot of vegetables to fill yourself up. But this is enough. We eat this. Uh, no one complains. We're all full. It's all gone, but we're all fine. We, you know, someone wants a leg, someone wants a wing. We negotiate. Uh, but there's lots of vegetables, and we always have at least one starch component with the meal. This is enough for a stir fry for a family of four. This is enough meat to carry a soup. That'll please and satisfy a family of four. Anyway, that's how you do it. One chicken, three meals for a family of four. Uh, the best deal on chicken, usually week to week, day to day, is the whole chicken. Yes, sometimes you can get a thing of wings or a thing of boneless breast for a deal because they're trying to unload, you know, overstock or whatever. But I'm talking, planning out your, your budget and planning to buy things. Whole chicken, if you look at the price per weight, it's usually the best deal. And that's because you're not paying someone to cut it up for you and put it in packages and make sure it's safe and all that sort of stuff. It keeps long, all that sort of stuff, right? Uh, so now we've done this. This will be boiled today. This will be today's supper. 
This will be tomorrow's supper. All good. <laughs> right? It takes a little bit of time to practice and get good at this. And I mean, even, you know, I'm not the greatest, if you had a professional chef here that does this sort of thing all the time, they do it in a fraction of time of, as me and do it better. But it's no big deal. I mean, you just work at it and you get a little bit better every single time, right? That's how you develop your skills. Uh, it's, it's useful to have a, a nice sort of pointy sharp knife, but you can get by, as long as your knife is sharp, right? Make sure your knife is sharp before you do all of this or it's, it'll be a disaster, right? And the most important thing of keeping a knife sharp is honing it every time you use it or almost every time you use it, right? This is one thing people just don't understand about knives. <laughs> Right? They think it's all about spending money to have a sharp knife. All these knives, most of my knives are less than 50 bucks, right? The one I used to do this was, a, I think, a $17 knife, right? It was sharp when I bought it, and all I've ever done is hone it. One, two, three. Before I use it, every time, stay sharp. Anyway, don't want to get off on a diatribe about that. Three meals from one chicken by buying a whole chicken and cutting it up with, a, with an eye to a little bit of forward thinking and planning. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden, have fun in your kitchen. Thanks for watching. Hey folks, guess what? I've started a newsletter at maritimegardening.substack.com. I'll be putting out one article a week. That's 52 articles a year. The articles expand the ideas that I mention on my videos and podcasts. And every article has a read aloud option. So you can just listen to me read it if you're busy doing something else. You can subscribe for $30 a year or try it for 5 bucks a month and see what you think. It's a great way to help support everything I'm doing here. But hey, there's also free content too. So if you just want to read the free stuff, that's fine too. As always, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden.